because now I do understand if I look back at how our marriage was when we were trying to keep it together and why he acted the way he did, like it makes sense. Maybe it doesn't justify, but it does make sense if you don't get the help that you need. All right, here we are. What's up, Gisela? Hey, Josh. Thank you for being here. Appreciate it. Thank you it. for having me. Um, let's just start off, uh, just introduce yourself. Tell us your name and um, you know who you are. Name is Gisela Delery. I'm former spouse of Michael Delery, who served in the United States Marine Corps. All right, so um, Mike Delery was uh, our first episode right here at Urban Valor. So, uh, you know, he was a sergeant, so uh, he got out a sergeant, served, I think, approximately eight years in the Marines. Um, and you were once married to him, right? That is correct. All right. So, um, you know, how about you uh, tell me a little bit about your upbringing? Tell me where, you were, where you're from, where you're born, and uh, talk to me about how you were raised. Absolutely. So I was born in Central America, in El Salvador. Uh, my parents brought me here when I was about one, and I was raised in Koreatown. Then we, for some reason, my parents bought a house in South Central LA, and pretty much went to high school in South Central, which is where I met uh, Michael. And growing up, I grew up with both parents. Um, once I turned 16, my parents divorced. Um, as soon as I graduated from high school, that's when, you know, I went to school and decided to get married to Michael right after, I would say, the first two years of the Marine Corps. Okay. Um, now, did you grow up with both your parents? Up until the age that I was 16. So between 17 and 18, I was still at home with only my dad. And then as soon as I turned 18 is when I married and I left home. Mm. Uh, do you have any siblings? I do. I have five brothers. And no sisters. All brothers, huh? All brothers. What was it like being the only girl? Rough. <laughs> um, talk to me a little bit about what it was like growing up in South Central. I think for most people, it would be, they would, the first thing they would think it would be rough, but I was pretty much, since I grew up around all siblings, I was pretty sheltered. So I lived in South Central, but never really was a part of so i know for sure like the schools weren't what they were supposed to have been like just the dynamics they were very secluded with either predominantly mexican or predominantly black uh, i know there was like a lot of drugs involved but i fortunately was never involved in any, in any of those things okay awesome um talk to me about when you first met mike when i met mike i was about 15 years old and we met in music class. We exchanged numbers. We became really good friends for two years. Um, after time, then during high school, we started dating and we pretty much stayed together off and on in high school. And then once we both graduated from high school, we have been together since then. So pretty much my high school sweetheart. So you met in music class. Yes. What, uh, were you playing an instrument? It was a piano class actually. So Mike played the piano, huh? <laughs> I think we were both learning how to play the piano at that time. Okay, that's, yeah. that's something I didn't know about it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so you met Mike, and then when did you start dating? Probably like a year or so after. And how old were you? 17. Okay, at this point, had Mike uh, enlisted in the military yet? He was actually in the process of, I know that they were going every weekend, they would do like some type of meet with the recruiters. Mm -hmm. So I know that every weekend he would have to go to the nearest recruiting station to do like their workout PT tests and things like that. So he was in the process of being enlisted in the Marine Corps. Okay. Um, if you don't mind, um, talk to me a little bit about what Mike was like back then before joining the military. What was his personality like? He's definitely always smiling. He was a very happy guy in a sense that, you know, very, I would say for the most part, he was outgoing, um, very focused in school. He used to do academic decathlon. 
I know that he did used to um, go on different trips, like to different locations with the team. Um, as, as far as personality, he was just very friendly and very nice. Uh, that's how I would best describe him. How did he treat you? I would say every, I give you an example of what he used to do when we were in high school. He would always write letters to me, even when we were friends. Um, by the time I graduated from high school, I had about 112 like love letters from him that I kept in a shoebox. Wow. Yes. And then he would always bring candy to school. He always have new pens that I would steal from him. And pretty much that's how he was. Mm. Uh, we didn't really, I used to run track in high school, but he wasn't really involved in the sports in high school. He was more focused on like, okay, I'm going to graduate. I'm going to join the Corps. Mm. Um, and... When you found out that Mike signed up to go to the Marines, um, how did you feel about that? I was happy for him. Um, I was really happy for him because I know that's what he wanted to do. And for any, you know, anyone that wants to do something positive in their life, you'll be happy for them. So I wasn't against him. I supported him. And <clears throat> you guys um, stayed together when he left for the Marines? Yes, we did. He went on to boot camp and I stayed back home. And I was supposed to go into the army and I decided not to during that whole process of boot camp because the first three years that I was gonna enlist, I was gonna be stationed in like Germany. And I was very in love and I just wanted to stay back home and I decided to go to school. Mm. And uh, what'd you go to school for? I went to school for the travel business. So hotel management, um, business management. Okay. And um, we know that Mike eventually, uh, you know, got through boot camp and then got stationed in Bangor, Washington, right? Correct. Um, and at this point, you guys were a couple? By that time, we were a couple. I would say after Bangor, we then just got married and I moved up to Washington State. Mm. So you guys were living together up there? Yes. Awesome. Um, what was, uh, what was life like for you guys living in Washington State, uh, you know, living in a military type atmosphere? Uh, for the most part, it was definitely a change because for me, myself, I went from living in a civilian world into moving into a very structural military. Um, it's a different dynamics of when you're out there in a civilian world versus when you go into a military lifestyle. Uh, we first got our first apartment off base. He was living at the time in the barracks and then we moved had a small apartment so it was different uh, for for me myself just you know moving from home freshly out of my first home out of high school and leaving my parents house so that was very different right um how long did you guys spend in washington state it was a long time <laughs> i would say he was stationed there for a couple of years, right? Yeah, so I would say about a year because the first year I wasn't there. Okay. And then, so I'd say about a year. And then we got stationed, I believe it was in Camp Pendleton. Okay, so um, when he got orders to go to Camp Pendleton, um, you went with him, obviously. Yes. Uh, did you guys live on like uh, military housing or, or since it was more local to where you were lived, did you, how, how, what was the situation like? So basically, once we, we had our first daughter in Washington first. Okay. And then by the time we relocated, a year and six months later, we had our son, which we already moved to um, the housing. I think it was closer to, I believe what it's called, Camp Horno. Uh -huh. And so we have an, lived in a community called Stuart Mesa. Okay. And so that's when... The military transition for myself completely changed from civilian to military. Mm. Um, and what was life like that, living in uh, the Camp Pendleton or Camp Horno area? For me, I liked it only because it, everything that I had in the civilian world, it was even more like a smaller circle of like family where you had like the commissary, you have shopping, you have theaters, like you don't have to leave base to get everything that you need to get done. So for me, it was convenient. Um, it felt like family. You meet different people. You meet other married couples that are going through the same thing that you're going through. So it was nice but it's a big change especially depending on where they are in their careers yeah um, now eventually mike um ended up 
uh, going overseas, right? Yes. And um, he was part of the invasion of Iraq? That's correct. Um, did you know he was going to end up in combat before he went overseas? Or what was that situation like for you? I know that during the whole Marine Corps training that he had, I knew at some point that it was a high possibility. When, once I started learning like the MOSs of what the job description was, then it became surreal to me. Um, when he first started his career, he was like a security forces, like in Washington State, where he used to guard nu nuclear weapons. Then he went from, you know, a different MOS or maybe a different job, which entitled he was a 0331 machine gunner. So I had to do my research and learn exactly what that meant. And I knew, I think that's when reality hit for me, that I knew that there was a high chance that he would deploy. And that was uh, um, after 9-11 it had already happened, right? Because 9-11, 2001. Yes, um, yes. During, before 9-11, well, actually, the day of 9-11, that's when I believe things started shifting for me in my mind of when he would go to war. Be that incident and then everything that was happening that he was coming home and telling me, hey, you know, I'm just letting you know we're going to start doing workups for the ship. And I'm like, I don't know what the workups for the ship means. I don't know. What do you mean? Like, I would ask him questions and then that's when I realized, okay, he's really leaving. And... um how did you feel when he left? Well, during the transition of the him leaving, I wasn't happy, of course. Nobody wants to see their spouse. Our son was about, I would say, two, well, he was about three months old, just being born. So our son was just born. So if I'm really honest, I was a bit devastated. Your son was just born and you, are, you had a daughter as well already at that yes, point, right? Yes, yes. Um, when he left to go overseas, um, what was it like being back on base? Did you have any uh, support, you know, being a spouse uh, back there? They have what they called is like the deployment groups and all the wives will get together. And a lot of the wives will go like to the movies or to dinner. So you'll meet a few wives, but it just all depends, you know, if you connect with those, but it wasn't like a structure like, Hey, you know, we're all meeting here or there was a leader. Let's, you know, let's all the wives get together. It wasn't no specific person assigned to a certain group. It was more of, okay, you live on base. This is your location where you live and you just connect with whoever's around you. Mm. So that was more of our support. The wives, we were just support each other. Did that help you? I definitely connected with a few good wives and that did help me, but I would say long term, if I looking back, it's, I think it could have been a better support. Mm -hmm. um, so Mike goes overseas and um, were you guys able to communicate back and forth with each other? No, there wasn't this online you know, system going on, there was nothing. It was just more like, okay, you write letters every day. You try to, you know, send them out a letter every single day and in hopes that you get a letter back. And whenever you did receive mail, you had to open all the letters at the same time and try to put the dates in order to see exactly which one to read first. So there was no sort of communication. I think maybe during ship, he would only get like maybe one phone call. And the quality of the phone call wasn't the greatest either because you could hear like the static or, you know, they're on the ship. So there was minimal to no communication between us. Right, right. That must have been hard, right, for you. And, and how old was your daughter at this time? She was one and our son was about, you know, I would say three, four months. So they're a little too young to even know what's really going on. Right? That is correct. Yes. Um, however, uh, old enough to still miss dad. Oh yeah, for sure. Definitely. Especially our daughter. She knew who dad was and it was hard for her. And um, do you, can you remember how long Mike was gone for? I would say about six months to a little bit more. It's been a long time. Right, right. 
Um, do you remember him coming back? Yes. Talk to me about that. So his last, I would say, location that he was at, he traveled through like Singapore, different uh, countries before making it home. We both were in contact. I don't recall if it was through letters or if it was through a phone call. And he was going to, one of his stops was in Hawaii. So in Hawaii, I decided to fly out to meet him and spend a week before coming back home together. So instead of him continuing with the guys in the ship, we decided to stay in Hawaii for a week. And that was a very emotional reunite, you know, the um, getting reunited again and just the whole dynamics of not seeing your spouse for so long, not what to expect, how I was going to be, how he was going to be. So it was definitely a happy moment, you know, to know that your spouse is back home, not knowing that if, you know, he could have not been home. Right, right. Um, so what was that week like for you in Hawaii? Uh, you know, getting, being reacquainted, you know, I understand the first day you're full of excitement and stuff, but, um, you know, is there anything that you uh, noticed different about Mike um, initially when you got back? The first day was definitely excitement, but the moment that we did see each other, I did notice that his hands were shaking a lot and he was very quiet. I know that he was excited, but he was very quiet. And when I saw him that his hands were shaking nonstop, I didn't know at the moment if it was something that it was because he was nervous about seeing each other or if it was something that had impacted him from overseas. And at that moment, as you know, the week went by, we, I noticed that there was a complete change in him. And then I knew that something wasn't right for him. Did you ask him about it? At the moment, I was too scared. I didn't know how to ask him. But what I did ask him if he was okay. I think that's all I remember. Are you okay? Why are your hands shaking like that? He's like, his response to me that I can recall was like, I'm fine. I'm going to be okay. And as the days, we were there for a week, so as the days passed, he would wake up in the middle of the night screaming or reaching for his gun. And that's when I knew that something completely changed from him. Um, I did suggest for him to, for us to go to counseling, but I, as a, you know, being young, being married, having your, your, your spouse coming from deployment, you don't know how to approach those things. Right. Um, you know, seeing him, you know, like you just described, uh, screaming in the middle of the night, reaching for his gun, uh, coupled with him not really talking about what happened while he was overseas, you know, what was going through your mind? Uh, you know, did you understand why this was happening? Were you confused? Did you want to know? I, I know you already mentioned you were afraid to ask, but you know, what other things were going through your mind? My background with my grand, my father and my grandparents, they have military background. They come from a place where there's like, you know, military and like, a lot of fighting. So I knew something happened because of the history of, you know, just military overall. And, you know, when men go to war, but I was too scared to ask him, but I knew that something wasn't right. And I just didn't know how to approach him. And I was too scared to say, Hey, we need to get help now because we don't want anything else happening. Um, I didn't ask him or I was just always too scared to even say anything to him. I just w would ask him more of like, hey, are you okay? Do you need anything? It was more of just that and it's very to the minimal and like I would say shallow instead of like digging in because I didn't know the circumstances, you know, of what he experienced out there. So it sounds like more of uh, providing support um, yes. over a solution, trying to find a solution, yes. right? Yes, yeah, I was more of definitely for sure a support of like trying to understand, listening to him if he wanted to talk about it, but it was never, you know, hey, 
let's plan this. Like it was never like that. Mm. Um, after that week in Hawaii, where did you guys go from there? We went home back to Camp Pendleton. And what was that like for you? For me, it was nice because the you know, our daughter finally got to see her dad and it was very, you know, a happy moment. And then our son was about, I would say, closer to nine or maybe between nine and 12 months. And it was hard for the little one because he didn't know who dad was before he left. So him coming home, he didn't recognize him. He didn't want to go to his dad. So it took a few months for him to warm up to his dad. But overall, it was a good um, experience the initial experience of when he came home. Mm. Um, now, when you say initial, um, you know, what was it like at, uh, as time went by? Um, For sure, it was very different than when we were together before post war, I would call that. Mm -hmm. He was more quiet, didn't really talk, didn't want to talk, wanted to be left alone. And as a spouse, you know, you miss that person. You want to be close to them. You want to love on them, but it just, little by little, it didn't, we kind of like, there was a separation between us. It felt to me. Mm -hmm. um, did you ever talk to him about the way you were feeling? I did speak to him about like, you know, that there was some type of gap between us and he would always say it was nothing, that I'm just making things up or it had something with work, but it was never really brought to the table per mm -hmm. se. Um, did, you have, did you have any other, um, you know, spouses to reach out to, to talk to about like, hey, I'm noticing these changes in my husband um you know are you guys noticing this with your spouse or anything like that i did have one specific wife that i connected to with during the time of war that we would like relate to each other but her situation was even i would say more worse so we were kind of all dealing with it on our own there wasn't no real connection to say hey you know are you going through this? If we did talk, it was minimal because it was so much going on in our homes at the time and just dealing with a lot of stuff on a personal level. Um, so how much longer did you, uh, uh, how much longer were you together with Mike, um, you know, after him coming back from war? Because eventually you guys split up. Obviously, you're his ex-wife, right? So yes. um, what kind of things started happening where, you know, maybe you uh, you know, cause more separation or you didn't find a solution for, obviously. Um. I would say we stayed together through the entire course of his Marine Corps career. Okay. And a little bit after that. Mm -hmm. And we definitely found ways. Our faith was one of the biggest ones that we tried to connect and rekindle a lot of the things. But in reality, it was never really talked about, all the things that he went through, and it was never really dissected, and everything was just like, oh, we would attack each other instead of getting to that root cause of like, why are we acting the way we did? Or why, why, is, why are you always so upset? Or short temper? Um, and I think that's just how gradually led for us to split. Yeah. And things weren't like that before um, of him going overseas. Is that right? No, I think because we got, we, we got married so young, we definitely grew together, but him going to war kind of helped us like grow apart, if that makes sense. Yeah. And so he was like a totally different person than what he was before. Mm. Now, so, so you guys were still together and married while Mike got out of the military and he eventually uh, started working for the LAPD, right? Yes. Um, would you say him going into law enforcement um, helped him with what he was dealing with? Or um, 
you know, uh, you know, how would you say that affected him? I would say it helped him in, in a sense of him having some structure and still pursuing what he wanted in his career. But in the other hand, it didn't help him because the whole war, going through, you know, a complete war, being away from family, only pushed him to maybe just sweep things under the rug and not really um, learning how to cope with the after war. Mm -hmm. um, at this point, uh, the kids are a bit older, right? Yes, our kids are now 15, 19, and 20. Right. Um, but at the time when, uh, you know, Mike got back and got into the LAPD and stuff, they're a little younger than that, but old enough to kind of understand and, uh, you know, see, you know, understand their dad's not, not really understand why dad is acting certain ways, but they could recognize his, his yes. uh, personality, right? Um, did it affect the kids at all? For sure. It affected the kids 100%. Um, before war, he was more loving, more touching, um, you know, more affectionate, I would say. With our daughter, when he came back, he was a little bit less affectionate towards the kids. And the kids would always would want to talk to me or then talk to dad. But, you know, in the military world, law enforcement, you're always so busy. So there was some type of disconnection there. And, you know, daddy's always gone to work. So I think that it impacted the kids a lot. Yeah. Um, and then eventually you guys ended up uh, splitting up, getting a divorce, right? Yes. And is that, I imagine, because you guys just never were able to find a solution to work through the things that uh, you guys were dealing with? Would you say, would you say that um, the trauma that he experienced and witnessed um, being in the Marines uh, contributed to you guys separating? In my heart, I believe it really did. I think that if he would have never gone through a war, we probably would be together today. Hmm. Now, um, did you watch Mike's episode? I did. And uh, is there, you know, you guys didn't talk about a lot of these this stuff, you know, throughout your whole marriage. How, how many years were you married? <sighs> Long time. A long time, right? I mean, how many years after he had been overseas in combat? Um, you know, about how many years did you? I would there? say over a little over ten years. So about you know a little over ten years, he kept all this stuff in, right? I would say ninety percent of the time. The only thing that he would sometimes discuss is like you know if he was going through something, he'll mention portions of the story, but I would never get the whole story. Right. So, um, did you learn anything watching his episode? I've learned a few things that really... I cried through his interview because some of the things that he went through, I didn't know. And that was really hard for me to hear. And I think that if any human being would go through those type of situations, it would definitely impact a person. And I think if those things are not talked about, especially because he's a very, like, you know, he's an introvert. He doesn't really talk about things. And holding that for so many years, like, it's, it's hard. Um, feel free to grab a Kleenex if there, yeah. Thank you. No problem. Um, what, 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 uh, can you recall um, some of the things that uh, you uh, watched uh, during his episode that maybe surprised you or you didn't realize? For sure, the one that the kid was telling the, you know, the Marines to come. And then he thought that it was like some type of booby trap 
but in reality he was showing the marines to the bodies of other fellow military and then when they started digging and they found bodies i never really He's never spoke about that. And that was really hard for me to process because now I do understand if I look back at how our marriage was when we were trying to keep it together and why he acted the way he did, like it makes sense. Maybe it doesn't justify, but it does make sense if you don't get the help that you need. Did you feel any, um, you know, by, by watching Mike sit down and, and uh, express himself like that, um, you know, I'm curious, did it, did it, did it um, take any weight off your shoulders or, you know, answer unanswered questions? Obviously, he's never talked to you about that, but, um, you know, I'm just curious on how it feels for a spouse, you know, in your position, finally hearing that for the first time after... You know, you guys, you said you met him when you were like 15 or 16, right? Um, uh, and then, you know, all the years that had passed by since he experienced those traumatic events. Um, you know, how did that feel hearing that for the first time after so many years and everything you guys had, had been through? It was really hard. But during our marriage, I used to always blame myself for a lot of things of things that in my mind I thought that I did wrong or that I could have done better or should have done better and I blame myself but also it did feel some sense of relief because I know that it wasn't anything that I did or that I could have done to support and now that I hear his story in depths of like, you know, specific events, I have, it definitely relieves, like, I don't blame myself. Like, it feels like a little bit of weight has lifted me, but like, my heart still go, goes out to him. And like, he will always have like a special place in my heart that like, and no one would ever understand because we even though he's the one that was out in war i was that backbone with him and no one would understand unless you go through those things hmm. how many kids did you guys end up having together three total of three mm -hmm. and that's two boys and one girl two boys one girl the girl being the oldest and then the two boys. And what's your daughter's name? Her name is Sadie. Sadie. How old is she now? She's 20. And um, you you had told me earlier that um, she actually watched his, his interview, right? Um, what did she, you know, talk to me about what, what she uh, said to you? So one evening she came home. She's like, hey, mom, did you see dad's video? I said, no, not yet. I'm kind of not wanting to see it yet. It took me about a week to even finally see it. And what she said to me was, Mom, like I totally get why you held on to dad for so long. And I just started crying. Because the kids were young and they didn't understand and they probably don't remember. But that's what she said to me. And she's like, I understand why you are the way you are with dad. And that gave me a sense of relief from, for her to try to have a better relationship with the both of us. And that no matter what we went through, like, you know, she's loved. Um, so would you say that... Uh by Mike sitting down and expressing, uh, you know, everything that he had been through and telling his story, um, and then Sadie watching it, um, would you say that it, it, it helped her understand a lot more about her dad and maybe why he 
uh, the type of personality he has or um, maybe why he reacts in certain ways um, with her? I think so. What she said to me in her words was, you know, I understand why dad is the way he is. For example, she's like, I know why he doesn't want to go to amusement parks. I understand now why he hates fireworks and doesn't want to, anything to do with it. And she just explained to me that it definitely educated her on what he has been through, that she was unaware. She knew that things were crazy, but didn't know exactly what happened. And I think it possibly could help, you know, bring them closer together. That's great. I hope it does. Me too. Um, did the boys watch it? I don't think so. You don't think so? No. And I think the little one probably doesn't want to watch it just yet. Yeah. He's, he's very heartwarming and he probably, you know, it's a, it's, it's a pretty raw interview to listen to mm -hmm. and to like really understand. Um, especially because, you know, he's the last one, but uh, I'm not sure about the middle one as of yet. Um, would you say, um, after, uh, you know, now that you've watched that and, and heard Mike express himself and finally talk about, you know, some of these things that he hadn't talked about, you know, forever, um, looking back on the relationship that you guys, uh, had, um, do you think that by him talking about it initially when he came back that you guys could have uh, done anything different that would have maybe helped you guys uh, stay together or just got him help? Not necessarily you guys stay together, but, you know, just maybe possibly created a different path for you two? I would definitely say so. You know, we would have gotten, you know, maybe counseling or some type of therapy not necessarily for us to be together or just for him, just help himself. Uh, he's a very quiet person. He doesn't like to express anything, um, especially, you know, how he feels because um, that opens up a door for, you know, being vulnerable. And there's not too many people that like to put their place where they're vulnerable. Mm -hmm. And that's a big thing for him. So hearing him and doing this, you know, interview made me really proud of him because he never talks about his feelings. And definitely, if I can turn the hands back of time, for sure, it would have helped us because we could have been, communication was completely dead for us at the time. Mm -hmm. And if something could have helped us, it's communication. Mm -hmm. And we probably would be together. Um. What would you say to, um, you know, another uh, spouse that might be dealing with uh, maybe the same situation that you were presented with when Mike got back? You know, we, we, there's, there's a lot of, uh, um, you know, it's not uncommon to find a, a, a combat vet roaming around these days, and w given what's, you know, gone on um, in the world uh, for the past, you know, a couple decades or so, and, uh, you know, I'm just curious, you know, what, what, what type of advice would you give um, another spouse, uh, another young spouse that might be dealing with this? And not even young, just any, anybody, you know, they might be in the same position as you. It, 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 it might have been eight years, you know, 10 years, 12 years, 16 years, um, and they might still be dealing with this. And um, I'm just curious on, on what you think they should do. I would definitely reach out to your peers is one of the biggest things. Definitely seek what resources are out there to help them cope and never be afraid to ask questions, you know, to people that have been dealing with this. Just definitely reach out and talk to people. I think that's one of the things that could have helped us because we were very secluded from family. It was just always me and him. If we were stationed in Washington, if we were stationed in Camp Pendleton, we were always by ourselves. We had nothing but each other. And if you have some type of support system, it would make a huge difference. Yeah, yeah, I agree. So, um, 
So I, I, I'd imagine you would agree that, you know, having a community of, 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 of you know, spousal support, maybe a community of veteran spouses um, mm -hmm. all congregated in one area that they're able to bounce stuff on each other might, might be really, really impactful for... For sure, it would definitely impact you differently because all you really have is each other. And if you have only one or two people versus a community, it's a huge difference. Right. Um, what's uh, your and Mike's relationship like now? You know, I know you guys, obviously, you have to still have a relationship. You guys got kids and, uh, um, you know, nothing's going to change that. Obviously, Mike is the father and you're their mother. Um, right. So there always has to be some type of relationship for, for you know, forever, right? Um, um, what's that been like for you recently? Recently, it's more of like always checking in with each other trying to keep the communication going uh, for the kids, for us just overall, um, just keeping the communication and always have a, like a good standing relationship between each other. Mm. And, you know, if, say if it's the children's birthday, we'll get together, have lunch. Um, but lately it's definitely been much more pleasant than it would it has been in the past few years. Um, that's great. That's great to hear. Um, and uh, we'll start to wrap it up. But um, what do you think? Uh, what do you think about what we're doing here at Urban Valor uh, by getting these stories out and encouraging um, veterans to sit down and tell their stories and spouses to sit down and tell their stories or family members? Um, what do you think about it? I think this should have been around 10 years ago, eight years ago, for sure, because it does help you know, other spouses that are going through this. I think it's a great opportunity. It's now that social media is much more popular than it was back then. Back then it wasn't as popular. I think back then is what they had is what MySpace or something. Mm -hmm. And now you have so many resources that you can use and just getting the word out there could definitely impact a life and possibly save a life. Awesome. Um, yeah, I definitely agree. And this is uh, why we, we are doing what we're doing. Um, you know, I 100% uh, uh, believe that, you know, uh, I mean, even you coming here to sit down and, and talk about your story and, and talk about, uh, you know, your side of it, um, you know, it, it is going to help somebody, another spouse out there that might be dealing with this, um, you know, and, and, and our hope is for them to reach out to us and, and for us to be able to, to help them with, with whatever situation they're in. So, um I thank thank you so much, Gisela, for being here. I thank know it you for takes having a, me. <laughs> I know it takes a lot of courage to to come and sit down in this seat, um, which is you know that's the whole point of why you know we've called this urban valor, right? Because you know it, it, um, you know valor meaning courage. It takes a lot of courage to sit down here and and, and be vulnerable and, and talk about you know let people inside of your life like this. So. Um, uh, you know, with that said, uh, you know, before we cut the tape, is there anything else you want to say before we wrap it up? Just thank you for having me and, um, you know, opening the doors to this new project. And I hope that it does help, you know, the community that's out there that needs to be reached. Awesome. Well, thank you so much. Thank Giselle. you. From the bottom of our hearts at Urban Valor here, we told we we 100 percent, you know, there's words can't explain how much uh, appreciation and, and how how grateful we are. Uh, for you to come and sit down and talk about it. Thank you. Thank you. Push it to the limit, I can't go no more. Red light, no way I'm coming back home. Long dirt road all on my own. I'ma be the greatest, draw my name in the stone. Draw my name in the stone.